because they come out good. So, uh, again, I want to welcome all of you to our school of ministry. And uh, it's a blessing. I was with you last week. It's a blessing to be with you again this week. And we're going to continue where we left off. Um, and so let me see where I marked it. Some of you guys might know better than I did. Okay. Let's see. We'll open it up with prayer, but I want to I want to find out where I am first before we even start. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. So we are in chapter two, and the title is "What Your Aim as a Minister Must Be." And the first thing we talked about last uh, uh, last week was that the first point was that you must know, believe, and understand God. Okay, and. Um, We discussed that you must personally know Christ and the power of His resurrection. Do you remember that? We talked about the power of the resurrection of Christ. And then um, the third point was that you must forget the past and press on for the prize. And so I'm going to do like I did last week. Our fourth, uh, the fourth one, let me see here. Okay, we're going to start with number four tonight. But um, <clears throat> I think we touched on it actually, but we'll probably just pick it up from there. And again, uh, as I come in and I talk to you about this, because so much of this deals with the past. Every time I come here, and, and really pretty much wherever, whenever I go and speak, I try and offer a couple of my books. Uh, I talked about it last time I was here. Is there anybody here that wasn't here last time? Okay. Um, and uh, I know that a lot of people here have bought the books, Okay. And I'm letting them go here for ten dollars, just ten straight. <clears throat> My publisher is Amazon. They sell it for seventeen ninety nine, and by the time they ship it, it's about twenty five or twenty six dollars, I think. But just a real quick rundown of the twelve chapters that I have in here. Can you really escape from your past? That's a good question. The sin related past. What about it? When you've sinned, how do you get over it? How do you move on? Forgiving and forgetting. Um, when you're the innocent victim of other people, okay? When others want to remind you of your past failures, and a lot of people like to throw our past up into our face. Um, As a man thinketh in his heart, the Bible says, so is he. And that's in one of the chapters. How do you think about yourself? How do you think about the Lord? How do you think about one another? Um, the power of, to of the tongue. I talked about it a little briefly. The Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. We talked about what happens when you call a brother a fool or a good for nothing or talking about brothers in the Lord and why the Lord equates that to murder because you destroy a person's spirit. And, uh, and the Bible likens the tongue to being like a, a small rudder of a ship. It's small, it steers a big ship, and it can take it to the left or it can take it to the right. And the Bible says that by the tongue, uh, we set our own, fire, our own lives on fire to hell sometimes. So have to be careful what we say. Then I talk about right and wrong confession. Many people confess things in the Bible. There is a right way to do it. There is a wrong way to do it. Some people abuse it. Other people uh, uh, do it the right way. We need to know what God says about it so we know how to pray. Okay, self-blame. Am I getting what I deserve? That's a good one because a lot of times we look at our lives now, especially those of us that are coming in, you're a new Christian, you're, you're, you're starting out in the school of ministry here, but you're still going through things. And you wonder, is this just my lot in life because of my past? Am I getting what I deserved all along and now I'm just reaping it? And uh, so we talk about that. And the answer, of course, is no. God, 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 God has a better plan for you. Then we talk about staying free and in victory over the past so that you don't run back to where you came from. Many times, uh, one of the biggest fears that we have is that we end up back where we began before we got saved. 
or or we end up just treading water because of our past. So we want to stay free and in victory over our past. Then in uh, chapter 11, we want to choose life. The Bible in Deuteronomy says, I lay before you today a blessing and a curse, life and death, choose life. So God doesn't want puppets. Um, he, he gives us a choice, but the choice is yours to make. Okay, and then finally, the last chapter is wounded in the church. So there are those maybe that have been involved in, in uh, let me put it, I, I say religion, but they've been involved in Christianity to some other places. Maybe that uh, there wasn't love shown. Maybe there were issues that were there and it's, it, it's discouraged people, the hypocrisy and other things, and even in the leadership from going back. And there are a lot of people, folks, that don't want to be a part of organized religion. I've had many people ask me, can I be a Christian without going to church? And I answer them truthfully, yes, you can. But it's going to be a lot harder because faith comes through hearing and hearing of the Word of Christ. When you go to church, you have other people around you that can lift you up and pray for you when you need help. And you need to find out what your purpose is. Is it just to be a Christian and go to church? Or is, do you have a ministry? Do you have a purpose and, and the only way to find that out, in church you can minister to other people. God will bring other people in your paths. And in doing that, he reveals himself more to you. And so these things are covered in that particular book. I brought two copies. I have uh, probably 10 or 20 in my car. So if anybody wants one, I really, really encourage you guys, especially going through this uh, school of ministry, get the book. Because it will help you so much in some of the things that we have to cover. I know for some people, ten dollars is a lot. If you don't have ten, but you want it, you know, I'll come down as low as I can can to give it to you, just so you'll read it. Okay, so it's totally your choice. You know, I'm not. A, you know, I just want to make it available for you. My second book is Escape from Apostasy. How many of you know what apostasy is? Because that really falls in line. Uh, with with uh, what we're going to be getting into. Apostasy is the falling away from the faith. And, and the Bible says right before the <clears throat> return of the Lord, before the coming of the Lord, that many <clears throat> will abandon the faith, will fall away. There'll be many that were hot for Jesus and on fire for the Lord that will go back to their drugs, go back to their drinking, go back to their womanizing and, and other things. And they're going to abandon the gospel. We talk about why that happens and what it is and what, we, what, 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 what is the future for the church in the days ahead. Well, this book d d it discusses it all. And if you're going to be a minister in these end times that we're living in, you need to know. And this was the first book the Lord put on my, uh, on, on my heart to write. And then I wrote the second one and just uh, published that one. Uh, a few months ago. Okay, so I just want to make these available. Folks, after the service is over, if you want one, uh, come over and I'll get it to you. This one's also for $10. If you can't afford $10, i will give it to you for whatever you can, uh, you can pay me. All right? And if you want me to sign it, I'll sign it. All right? I just think these books ought to be distributed to every person that walks through these doors. You know, almost, <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I was a pastor of, 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 of this church, not of this church, but I pastored, you know, before I, 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 I've gone now to ministry where I ministered a lot of churches. But if I was still pastoring my own church, I would make it a mandatory thing that the people in my church take one of these books. What they do with it after they get it, I can't control. But I would, I would get it to them and I would say read it because it, would, it, it explains so much. And it, let me find the right word. It does the work for me that I don't have to do again and again. So, because I find myself preaching about all the things that I've written here over and over again. And if people would just read it and get it in their spirits. And sometimes that's what it takes. When we get into groups like this, some of us flourish and others of us need to go back and be able to think about things. And so, I want to make sure that uh, I make these available for you. And so let me know at the end of the, of the uh, study tonight. So we, get going, we got going about, uh, I'm going to say 6.30 now, so we were going to try to wrap it up by 7.30. Um, I, I'm sorry I ran a little bit late today. 
Uh, I had business, um, a military type of business in uh, Yuma today. And so I went to the Yuma uh, this afternoon, got everything done <laughs> without knowing even... I, I had a built-in time clock that got me here. And then I took off from Yuma and came all the way across Yuma to Quartzsite and down, you know, to get over here. Because that's what my GPS told me to do. But, you know, I got here. So we're here and we're ready to go. All right, so we're going to continue... Uh, about in this chapter, in chapter 2, um, again, about what your aim as a minister must be. All right, and so we want to start, I'm going to pick it up in point 4. Now, I may have, I may have touched point 4 last time, but I want to go, I want to hit it again so we can get through this, and I want to make sure, I, because I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. So, Immediately going into point four uh, is that you must set this as your great aim and eagerly expect and hope to reach for it. What, what are we talking about our great aim should be? Number one, not to be ashamed in anything. Wow. Think about that. How many of us are ashamed of our past? I, I, I Sometimes I'm ashamed of my past. I, when I start thinking about it, I'm ashamed of it. But you know... You know why the Lord is saying for, for us not to be ashamed of our past? Because He's wiped it away. The Bible says as far as the east is to the west, He removes our sins. And He remembers them no more, right? Is that right? Do you hear what I'm saying? So if God is not ashamed of your past, why, why should you be? Think about it. This is something all of you here need to think about. Think about it, because people are going to lay trips on you as you go out and minister. They're going to see your tattoos. Uh, you know, he, was, he came from a gang, or he was out in the streets. Or, or they're going to see something, and they're going to, people judge in the world from outward appearances. They don't know your heart. They don't know what Christ has done in your life, and they won't know until you tell them, until they begin to see it. But people have first impressions of all of us. There are people that decide whether they like you or not the first time they see you. So it's very important for everyone here, if you're going to be in ministry, to know who you are in Christ. And you've got to know who you are. It doesn't matter what others say. It, it, it only matters that you know who you are in the Lord. So your great aim, uh, number first part of that, is not to be ashamed in anything. Because you've been cleansed. If you've accepted Jesus Christ the Lord as Lord, you're a new creature. Old things have passed away. Old things have passed away. You got, got it? Yeah. All right. The second is, okay, your great aim is to exalt Christ, whether by life or by death. We, that could be physical life, physical death. That could be life in the world where you could do whatever you wanted to do and reap the results later. Or it could be the death that we do, we live every day when we, we sacrifice. And we talked about that, about carrying our, our cross, right? Okay, so according to my, okay, I'm sorry, let's, let's, I was starting to read my own scripture here. Somebody turn to Philippians chapter 1 verse 20. Philippians 1 verse 20. And again, because we are on, uh, uh, this is being broadcast live, uh, it'll be on Facebook live, and I, I may put it over on my YouTube too. I want you, those of you that read, to get your hands up. And when you read, read loud so the people that are listening can hear. Uh, Pastor, go ahead. Okay. Philippians 1.20 I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will exalt in my body, whether by life or by death. Okay. See... We're to exalt Christ whether it be by life or death. This, this has to be a great aim. Uh, if you're taking notes, put great aim. A, not to be ashamed in anything. B, to exalt Christ whether by life or by death. And the scripture here backs it up. I'll never minister anything that I can't back up through the word of God. And here, as our brother wrote, according to my earnest expectations and my hope. This is in Philippians, okay? So... The apostle is writing to the to the to Christians 
in the Philippian church or, or to, the, to the Philippians, it is my earnest expectation. It is what I expect of you. It is what your pastor expects of you as, as disciples. This is what I expect of you as an apostolic ministry of all of you. Okay? And, and it's my certainly my hope or I wouldn't be here. Okay? That in nothing, number one, that I be ashamed, in that in all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be manifest, magnified in my body. Whether it be by life or by death. And I project that over to you in teaching you this. It is my hope that you, okay, will not be ashamed in anything, folks. Men, women, that, that you not be ashamed in anything. And that with all boldness, okay, as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in your body. Folks, we, it seems like, as, as I do this study, <clears throat> The Apostle Paul keeps placing an emphasis on our body. And so we, we, we need to guard ourselves, okay, against the things that come. Because this is where Satan likes to attack, he, uh, you know. And it can be through lust. It can be through a relationship, through, through uh, sex with somebody that you're not supposed to be with, that you're not married to. But it can also be through drugs and through alcohol, through overeating. A lot of things, but that he be magnified. We should take care of ourselves. Right? Brother Richard, how are you doing today? How are you doing? Well, you asked me to tell you if I had any symptoms or whatever. Well, I know you're going to have some symptoms still, but I want to know okay. if you're getting better. I don't know if I'm getting better. I know that I have, have had things pop up. The other night, it, perhaps it's toxins coming out faster. I don't know. Uh -huh. But I, I couldn't move my neck. Uh, my feet were swollen. I couldn't hardly walk. I was dizzy. I know the feeling. I'm a little bit better today. Oh. Yeah. Praise God that you're better today. Amen. Start believing you'll be better tomorrow. You know, when I go through these things, and I'm a, I'm a Vietnam uh, vet also, and, and there are times I, I experience things physically, but I always say, you know what? I, tomorrow tomorrow might be a better day. And I just progressively believe that, and usually is. But we go through our, our tri tribulations and trials, and I've seen God progressively heal people. And sometimes He does it immediately, and boom, I've seen that. I've laid hands on people, and the Lord healed them just like that. They went to the hospital, doctors checked them, they were fine. And or, Whereas they had blood tests before that were negative. Then I've seen situations where I laid hands on people, like I, I mentioned last week, and, and I, I talked to them a year or two later, and they tell me that, hey, I'm off of all my medications and I'm healed. So, you know, we keep believing, keep having faith, and you keep believing and having faith, okay? Sure. Uh, the reason I came back to you and stopped my study was because the Lord uh, put it upon my heart to ask you, you know, when I was in the parking lot, and I realized I hadn't done that. So I want you to know, man, I'm praying for you, okay? All right, so uh, the next scripture we want to read, okay, is in... Um, uh, let's see, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Romans 12, 1 through 2. Okay, yeah, go ahead, brother. Right here? You, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to have you read back there, so get ready. Okay, dear friends, God is good, so I beg you to offer your bodies to Him as a living sacrifice, pure and pregnant. That's the most sensible way to serve God. Verse 2. Don't be like the people of this world, but let God change the way you think. Then you will know how to do things that is good and pleasing to Him. Okay. Now, the brother that was in the back over there that raised his hand at first. Romans 12, 1. Can you read the same uh, same thing again? Because I want to see, I want to see it in some, some different versions. Romans 12, 1 through 2. Romans 12, 1 through 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies... As living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Verse 2, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. 
Amen. I, I, I think this is such a powerful scripture that it ought to be a five-star scripture. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. Number one, it's by His mercy. Okay? We're not, you can't make yourself holy. Where our holiness comes because we stand in the righteousness of Christ. If you try to climb that stairway to heaven, you'll never get there. You just can't. You'll never be good enough. Okay? But we stand in Christ's righteousness based on what he did on the cross. And he says, I beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the mercies of God, it's by his mercy, that ye present your bodies. Here we go again with the body, right? So we have the scripture that went with what we talked about, to exalt Christ, whether by life or by death. Okay? And then... You know, then, then we talked about how he should be magnified in her body. But here again, okay, we saw that in Philippians 1.20, but here again in Romans, he again says it. This time, Paul is addressing the, Rome, the, the, the Christians in Rome. And he's saying, again, he's saying, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that we, what, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Why? Because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You were bought with a price. You need to remember that. When you walk in the streets or doing whatever you do and you see the guy that looks like you look, you got to remember, folks, even though he looks like you look, he's not you. And you're not him. And you're not in that world anymore. We're in the world, but we're not of it. Right? We blend into it so that we can minister where God wants us to minister. There are things, places that you guys can go that I could never go. There are places I could go, maybe that you can't go. But God wants us to get the word out to other people. And you blend in, but you don't conform to who they are and what they are. You understand what I'm saying? If you, if you really, if you understand it, give me an amen. amen. All right, that's the way I want to hear it. Okay, so he says, To present yourself, your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, okay? That's how, that's our service, you know, we, we serve the Lord, okay? And, 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 and that's what it is. Our, our service is not so much in just the things that we do, but it's in who we are, okay? And how we walk. And it's in an obedience. Presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice is an act of obedience. And we have a lot of people that are Christians that know the Word of God and they know all these things, okay? But they don't obey them. You know, Jesus said to... To, to some people that he was ministering to. Thank you, brother. He said, why is it that you call me Lord, Lord, but then you don't do the things that I say? That, that, I mean, that is the golden question for Christians in the church today. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but then you don't do what, you, what I tell you to do? So we need to, our reasonable service is to accept what God has called us, who God has called us to be, but then to also be obedient. And then he goes on to say, and be not conformed to this world. See, I already told you that. We're in the world, we're not of it. So don't conform yourself to it. All right, be, you're, be not conformed to this world, but listen to this. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. How does that happen? Giving your life to Christ. That's, a good, that's where we start. Okay? Giving your life to Christ. How else is your mind renewed? Anybody? Reading your Bible. The Word of God. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say that. He's going to say that. Good. Yeah. Forgiving yourself. Forgiving yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You can't go forward if you're always going backwards. That's right, brother. Go ahead. Changing the way you think about Chang thinking You're changing the, your thinking. That's right. Our, the Lord is saying that, our, that we're, we, we're, we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. So what does being transformed mean? It means that we're changed. We change when our mind changes. You know that? Think about it for a minute. If you're thinking in your mind, and your, your mind is still in the gutter, you're going to be in the gutter too. But if you think like a king and you think like a conqueror, you will be a king or a conqueror. Okay? You, how you think here is really important. Okay? So, the Word of God tells us that we're to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. 
that you may, what? Prove. Prove what, what the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, what it is. Because, folks, everybody's talking about it, but nobody's doing it. The world is out there, and there are many people that are not in church today, probably in the community next door to you, even. There are a lot of people that, that would like to believe. There are people all over the world that I, I know many myself. And they're not going to church, but they would like to believe. But they want, they want to see it proven in the lives of somebody. So that there are not a bunch of people spouting out the word, preaching on Sunday... Standing behind the pulpits, you know, or, or amen and hallelujah and dancing around and all this other stuff. But then as soon as they get out of the church, they go, they live, live like the devil Monday through Saturday. They go right back to doing the, the things that they did before. We, we, there has to be change in our lives. Okay, so we're transformed or changed by the renewing of our minds so that we can prove. P-R-O-V-E. Proving is being a witness to others. So what you do in this world, what you do outside of this room, what you do outside of Set Free Desert Center, folks, it matters because you're proving what the acceptable will of God is, and that is your witness. That is proof. Your witness to others. Right? It's heavy. We break one verse out of here and we talk about it for 15 minutes. <laughs> But, but it's amazing what you can get out of it if you just take it and dissect the words and break it down. I think that's one of the things where God has really blessed me. You know, being an investigator, I've always learned to dissect things and take them apart and put them together. That's how I started with the government when I was 18 years old. I was an intelligence investigator already at the age of 18. And I, I, so I still think like that. When, but I apply it when I read the Word of God. And so I'll take a, a, a scripture and I'll take it apart. And for when I take it apart, it speaks volumes. Some of us, we just ramble through it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Prove what the good and acceptable will of God is. Okay, be transferred by the renewing of your mind. I've heard all that. No, break it down. Listen to it. Get it in your spirit. Slow down if you have to when you read the Word. Don't try to do too much. Well, I got to read my five chapters today. No, forget. I, I, look, if you can read five chapters and you can comprehend it all, great. But I'd rather see you take one verse or five verses and get it in your spirit than take five chapters and just roll through it. Okay, get it in your heart. Ask the Lord, God, Lord, help me. And when I read the Word, I do it. I say, God, open my spirit, Lord. It's been a hard day. A lot of things are flying in and out of my mind. Things people have said to me. Things that have upset me, uh, you know, or, or whatever. But Lord, help clear my mind here so that I can, I can hear what you're saying. And then when you get into the Word of God, believe God to open it up for you and He will. Okay, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. There's a 1 Timothy and a 2, so don't give me 1 Timothy. 2 Timothy 1, 3. Okay, I'm going to wait for a second. I take my brother in the back there. I'll get you here in a minute. Okay. Uh, 2 Timothy 1 3. 2 Timothy 1 3. Read it loud, brother. 2 Timothy 1 3. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did. Okay. That's see. good. That's it. That was, that's all three is, right? No, there's more. Oh, is there more? Yeah. Okay, well, let's stop it there. Okay, I just want to stop there because. Um, and then can can who else raise their hand? Can you you, you did? It's the same version. Same version. Yeah. Okay. Can I get one more version? Okay. Go ahead. Uh, verse three. Night and day I mentioned to you. I mentioned I mentioned you in my prayers. I am always grateful for you as I pray to God, my ancestors, and I have served with a pure conscience. Okay. So I thank God whom I serve. From my forefathers with a with pure conscience. So the, the whole issue here is that in order to have a pure conscience, we go back to the, the to the first thing I said, you can't be ashamed of anything. Your conscience has to be pure. If you have issues, okay, 
<clears throat> and, you, and these things are bothering you, then you need to do what the brother back there said, forgive yourself. And you also need to repent. <coughs> All right? Repentance is something we don't do every now and then. It is something we do every day. Because we're imperfect people. We stumble, we fall, we say things, we do things, we think things. We have to repent. So, when God is, is, is speaking to your heart, when you're feeling, uh, when your conscience is bothering you, there's a better way of putting it, then repent. Get, put it behind you and then move on. Okay, just speed the videotape forward, pass the bad part, move on. All right? Okay, so here's the thought. Okay, that the only place that people can see Christ living is in the body and the life of the believer. you believe that? The only place people, people outside, maybe even you to one another to one another, the only place people can see Jesus Christ living today, okay, is in the body and the life of the believer. If it's not being shown in us, folks, and we're ministers, okay? If it's not being shown in us, who else does the world have to look to? Do they pray and expect God to wave a holy magic wand? Because it's not going to happen like that. The Bible says that he's to be glorified in his many-membered body. That it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. That he is the head, but we are the body. That he is the chief cornerstone, but we are the rest of the temple. Correct? All right, so, so we understand that the only place that people can see Jesus Christ living is in the body and the life of the believer. Folks, it has to be. We've got to get that. If we can't get this, we can't go any further. Because I could read to you, and I'm going to get into what to do when people preach false doctrine to you. We're going to talk about all that kind of stuff. What about false prophecy? What about this? And what about that? We're going to get into a lot of stuff. But we have got to get the essentials and the basics out of the way. And we've got to make sure we understand these things. Okay? All right. I mean, I'm, I'm passionate about it. Because I think you guys are getting it. When I first came in here... And I, I, was, I was looking at the group and thinking and watching, like I always do. I, I look at body language. I can tell whether somebody's paying attention to me or not. I can tell whether somebody's thinking about something else or not. And I look. I, pay, I see everybody. I pay attention. You see me when I'm talking. I'm looking around. And my first week, my second week, I was wondering, is this going to be too much for them or are they going to get it? Am I going too high for them too fast? Or, or, or can they get this? And after a couple of months now, I guess it's been, or, or, or whatever, yeah, I see, the, I see people getting it. I see you guys picking it up and growing and maturing. So um, I feel blessed. I'm happy because, because it's effective. Amen. Right, Sister Jenny? Yes, sir. Amen. I see it. Yeah, go, brother. I'm going to tell you the truth. I didn't want it here. You, yeah, you didn't want it? I didn't want it. Yeah. But I was yeah, yeah. I heard that. I heard that from a couple of other brothers too. You know, um, when I first came in, I thought, man, I'd rather be somewhere else, <laughs> and and everything. But we, but but in our flesh, I mean, see that that is the flesh. In our flesh, we'd all sometimes rather be somewhere else. There are days, believe me, that I have to go and minister, and I and and my, and my day is. Maybe physically and maybe mentally, I've gone through it, man. And, and but 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 I go and I I'm, I go and I'm obedient to the Lord. And the funny thing is that while I'm in route and I'm on the way, right, the Lord refreshes me, and then I come out feeling uh, good. I have walked into churches sick and came out feeling great because Satan wanted to battle me all the way to keep me from getting there, and that's the deal with you, bro. You didn't want to be here at first. I didn't even want to come. Yeah, why? Because Satan, <laughs> Satan was doing everything he could to stop you from coming. I was tired. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know, the devil. Hey, you know who else was tired? Remember the the, the <laughs> disciples when Jesus was praying in the Garden of right. Gethsemane. That's 
Right. And Jesus kept coming down off the rock to them and said, Look, can't you even stay awake for a few minutes? Yeah. I'm just praying here. Can't you believe with me? Can't you just stay awake? No, they, they did not it off again. The enemy will hit you, folks, with a spirit of heaviness. And you've got to throw it off. I, I've, got, I've walked into churches sometimes. Hey, sister, God bless you. It's good to see you. I have, I, I have walked into some churches and I, I think, oh, oh gosh, this is going to be a pickup job. Because I'll walk into some places and the people look like they're about to die. <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking, okay. So the worship team apparently didn't do its job because the people aren't ready. If I just get up here and preach the word, they're not going to get it. So I've got to work and I've got to do everything spiritually and everything physically and everything mentally that I can to pump them up just to the place I can get the word to them. But then you go into other places and people are ready. They're, they're chomping at the bit. They want to hear the word of God. And it's so it, it just flows. They draw it out of you. You don't even have to make an effort. It just comes out. Now, see, I, I sense that spirit of anticipation here today. I came in here to today and, 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 and it just began to flow. Boom. We're hitting it. We're hitting it. Not, we're not dragging through. If now some of you guys are dragging through, wake yourself up. You know, the Bible says, stir up the faith that's within you. Okay? God's not going to stir the faith up that's within you. You've got to do it. But, he, but you can do all things, like the Bible says, through Christ who strengthens you. All right? All right. So, he, he went on to say that he was glad that he served God with a pure conscience. So, we want to have a pure conscience before the Lord, too, which means... Continually re rededicating our life. And I'm talking about getting saved over and over again, folks. I'm just saying recommit your hearts. Repent. Do the things you need to do to make sure that your conscience is right and is pure. Amen? You know, hear what I'm saying? Okay. So, the only place that people can see Christ living is in the body and the life of the believer. So, consequently, there is only one place. Consequently, there's only one place Okay, where you can magnify and glorify Jesus Christ. Think about that. There's only one place where I can magnify and glorify Jesus Christ? Yeah, Th that place is in your body. You can glorify and magnify Jesus Christ in your body. You must therefore commit your body totally to Jesus Christ. I'm speaking to each one of you guys here. This is what you got to do. You've got to commit your body totally. Totally to Jesus Christ. I'm talking to myself too. You know, when I read that, you know, I, I, you know, sometimes words jump out at you, and I see it, you know, as, as being important for myself. Also, I got to commit my body totally to the Lord. We we all got to do this, folks. Okay, there are no super saints in the church. I don't care what you who, who's preaching and and what you've been led to believe, but we're all flesh. Okay, and we all have uh, a sinful nature, let me put it that way, because of Adam and Eve and what they did in the garden. Uh, you know, sin was transferred to us, so that's why we can't work, walk perfect. That's why the Jews couldn't keep the Ten Commandments. God gave it to them to show them they couldn't keep it, so that they would realize that they needed a greater sacrifice. Or else we all along, we would think, we don't need Jesus Christ. I can, I, can, I can make the heaven. I'll just be good, do, what the, do, the, do the Ten Commandments, and climb my little stairway. But you can't. Just Ten Commandments, but no one could ever keep all of them. Okay? So, all right. So, so we want to make sure that we see that Christ is being glorified in our body, so we need to commit our body, to commit our body totally to Jesus Christ. Okay, now... With that thought, okay, number A, I'm going to say this, okay, you must guard your body from the following one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to give you eight points that you need to take, guard your body from. Okay, eight points you need to guard your body from. All right, number one, okay, wondering and questioning God in His Word. Wow. You must therefore commit your body totally to Jesus Christ. You must guard and keep your body from one, uh, 
wandering, I'm sorry, wonder, I'm sorry, wondering, wondering and questioning God in his word. We have to, folks, believe God's word. That's, a, that's tough. That's sometimes, especially when we're going through difficult times. Or when we see somebody else go through them. It's easy. You know how, how, how Eve fell into sin, right? God, I mean, Satan got her to question the word of God. God said you, you can eat of any fruit in the tree, uh, in the garden, any, any one of them. The tree of, of life is here for you. But you can't eat of this one tree, good and evil. Because if you eat of that, of the tree of good and evil, you're going to die. Satan comes at her, he, he gets her to question the word. He says, come on, man. Surely, surely you're not, you're not going to die. <coughs> you're not going to die if you eat of that, that tree. She didn't realize, though, that, she was, that God was talking about spiritual death and really physical death, too, because they lived for thousands of years and hundreds of years, and now, you know, man lives for 60 or 70 years if we're lucky, maybe 80. So what happened with Eve was she questioned God. She began to wonder and question the Word of God, and when she did, it opened the door for Satan to lead her right down the road into sin, and she took the bite of the of the fruit and then gave it to her husband who also questioned the word of God. Because of that, folks, we have what's called the Adamic nature. The Adamic nature is that we have the sin nature on us because of the judgment that was pronounced on all mankind because of the sins of Adam and Eve. So, Pastor, what we're talking about is that... Um, uh, th that we're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ways that we need to guard our bodies. And the first one was to, uh, to uh, you must guard your body from wondering and questioning God and His Word. And so we've been talking about that. Number two, okay, we need to guard our bodies. And when I talk about the body, I'm talking about the mind too, because it's part of the body, okay? We must guard ourselves from becoming discouraged, and depressed. Wow. There are some people that live for days in, 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 in discouragement and depression. And, and I'll come into a church on Sunday and they've been going through it for, for a month. A pastor, I'm really glad you're here. Can, can you pray for me? I'm going through discouragement and, pre and, and depression. But, but how did you get there? We have to guard ourselves okay, from becoming discouraged and depressed. When you see that, that shadow starting to come over you, start taking authority over it. I rebuke this. I rebuke these emotions. I rebuke these feelings of depression. I rebuke these feelings of discouragement in the name of Jesus. Why? Do you, you, you know you have the right to do that? Do you? Because the Bible says whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. You have that authority. When I get hit like that, I do it. I, I say, Lord, I, I, I bind that the spirit of discouragement. I bind the depression in Jesus' name. I lose encouragement. I lose joy. So you have to take that authority. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violence and violent men take it by force. Folks, sometimes you just got to get mad. You got to get mad. Mad enough to say, I take authority over this. I'm not going to walk like this anymore. In the name of the Lord, I rebuke this in Jesus' name. I lose my breakthrough. You see? That's, that's hey, how you doing? That's what he's saying. I lose my breakthrough. You got to guard yourself from becoming discouraged and depressed. And you got to guard number three. Guard your body or guard yourself from becoming, listen to this one, I know the pastor will love this one. <laughs> Guard your body and your, or, or yourself from becoming lazy and undisciplined. <laughs> How many of you guys are willing to say amen? Amen. amen. Yeah, you know, there's a, there's a reason that, 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 that you guys are sent out to do some of the things that you do. And this is, this is one of them, because... Becoming lazy, undisciplined, and undisciplined is one of the worst things that can happen to you in your ability to grow and be who God wants you to be. Okay? Okay, so that was one, two, three. That was number four. Number five. Okay. 
One, two, three. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. The first one was wondering and questioning God and His Word. The second was becoming discouraged and depressed. The third was becoming, oh, I didn't go to number three. So you're right. Okay, the third one, I skipped it. Okay, so we'll just make that number three. And, and, and that one is becoming, guard, you've got to guard yourself from becoming complacent and slothful. You know what that means? Amen. Complacent, where you just figure, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're good. I'm good. I'm good where I'm at. That's complacency. Well, you don't really want to grow. You don't care to grow. Look, I'm fine where I'm at. I don't need to know more of God. I'm not looking to be a holy Joe. You know, uh, I don't want to, I, I'm all right where I'm at. Just, just leave me alone. <laughs> That's becoming complacent. And slothful. Slothful is laziness. It's just, well, I just don't want to do anything. You know? Slow. Slothful. Yeah, stagnant. That's good. That's a good one. Stagnant. I like that. I like that definition, actually. Because slothful, to me, runs in line with laziness, which is what, what the other point. But stagnant, that, 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 that's, a, that's a good word. I for think that. A, a good example of that, I don't know if you guys ever seen Ice Age, right? You know that the little, uh, <laughs> that little guy, Sloth? Uh-huh. He's very stagnant, right? Very lazy, right? That's a right. good example right there. There you go. Yes, that's good. Okay, so... Uh, Jenny, I'm going to go back just real quick for you because I know you, you had to go and take, take, some, take care of some business. So we're talking about the things that we must guard and keep our body from, and there's, there's a number of points. The first one was we need to keep, guard and keep our body and our mind, which is part of our body, ourselves, from wondering and questioning God and His Word, from becoming discouraged and depressed, from becoming complacent and slothful or stagnant, okay? And... The next one, one, two, three, four, is becoming lazy and undisciplined. That's one of the good reasons that we go out and work and do the things that we do. Okay. And then, then number one, two, three, four, five. Mike, I got my own points and not his numbers, so I have to keep going back and counting. Okay, we need to guard ourselves from becoming sinful and failing. You may fail once, and you may fall once, and you may sin occasionally. Sometimes, some, we, none of us are perfect. But you don't want it to become practice. You don't want it to become a habit. Right? <coughs> so you want to guard yourself from becoming, from sinning and failing. I mean, it's always better to succeed than fail, right? Yes. And it's better to not sin than to sin, right? See, I, you, you hear me say and you hear other ministers say, well, you know, none of us are perfect, we all sin. And that's true. Uh, okay, but we, we shouldn't preach a message on it. For all, all the time. We need to understand that, yes, this is what we do because we, we, we're, we're, our bodies are part of a sin nature, but it doesn't mean it, it ought to be an excuse to just go out and sin, sin, sin. Mm-hmm. Or go out and fail, fail, fail. We ought to, you know, we ought to shoot for the prize, the high prize, the calling of God in our lives and, and, and find that out and shoot for it. Okay, the other thing, is that we need to guard ourselves from denying and turning away from Christ. Denying. Denying and turning away from Christ. And that happens. People say, well, you know, I thought that, that once you're, you're, you're saved, you're always saved and you can't lose it. I always say once I'm saved, I, I believe I'm saved, always saved too. I, I don't believe anybody can take my salvation away from me, but, but you can walk away from it. Just like you walked up to the altar, you can say, hey, I don't, I don't want it anymore, I'm done. And you can stay done. And that's why we have to guard ourselves from denying and turning away from Christ. The, the Apostle Paul, when he wrote in the, to the Romans, said this. He, said, he talked about Demas. And he said, Demas was among us. But he forsook us and he left because he loved the things of the world. See, it can happen. So we don't want it to happen, right? We don't want it to happen. Amen. So, one of the other things, okay? Denying and turning away from Christ, okay, we must guard and keep our bodies from overeating and drunkenness. Overeating and drunkenness, man. I, I, I didn't have an issue with drunkenness, but I remember, yeah, I, I remember weighing three hundred and twenty pounds. 
I didn't think I was overeating until I, I, I had him cut part of my stomach out and then I realized how much I really was overeating. Because now I'm, I, I got half my stomach and I'm fine. Uh, it's gluttony. It's just another sin. See, there are a lot of things that are wrong. That, 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 you know, that we, where we abuse. And, and why am I talking about this? Is it because the Lord wants to point out all the faults that we could possibly engage in? No. Because these are sins against the body. And the body is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. You know, you ever hear the saying, you are what you eat? You eat the wrong foods, I can give you wit. I, I would be a witness right here, and I'm ministering to you guys. You can get high blood pressure, you can get diabetes, you can get cancer. There are a lot of things that can happen because of what you eat. You know? Yeah. I was up to 285 on beer and haagen -Dazs. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You know? So I, I know, you know, I know, and, and now, thank God, I'm off of all that stuff. You know, I don't have cancer, I don't have um, high blood pressure, and I don't have diabetes. But you got to change. you got to be willing to ask God to help you. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Okay? And the other thing, okay, you must guard and keep your body from immorality and drugs. Immorality and drugs. I'm not just talking about, well, we know what immorality is. <laughs> it's thinking about immoral things, okay? And, we, and, and so I don't want, want to elaborate on that because I think all of you know what immorality is. Okay, but I do want to touch on the topic of drugs a little bit because a lot of people think that when, when, when we, we need to keep our body from drugs, we're thinking about street drugs. Well, you know, I better not go out and, you know, do the meth, shoot the heroin, snort the coke, you know, and stuff like that. But, you know, folks, I mean, there are tons and tons, and I, I can witness this from going to the VA. You got a problem, the VA just hits you with those drugs. Richard would probably tell you. They wanted to give me oxy. They I, yeah. I refused. They yeah. They they throw them at you. They first they start with Vicodin, and then when you and then they give you a prozolem or or vice versa, and then they give you a prozolem first, and then pretty soon it doesn't work anymore. And then they give you the Vicodin. You take that for a while, and then pretty soon that doesn't work anymore. So they put you on the oxycodone, you know, and, and stuff. And, and 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 so look, even prescription drugs can be abused. So watch yourself. If you, if it's getting if it if it is starting to get a hold of you, and, and and snag you, get help, pull back, get people to pray for you, go 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 to the doctor if you have to and detox, but don't let these things control you because they will wreck your life and wreck your ministry. Do you hear what I'm saying? This is just all practical stuff, but you guys got to know it because we can't go any further, in, unless you do. We got 15 minutes, okay? So okay, so we covered those points, okay? And then another thought, okay, or another part of this is that you must commit your body totally to Jesus Christ. You know, I think we've kind of touched on that already. I mean, if you haven't gotten that point, I don't know um, what else I can say. But you have to commit your, 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 your body totally to Jesus Christ. And there's um, one, two, there's two points about that. So I want to say what they, what they are. Okay, why, why must I commit my body totally to Jesus Christ? Number one, so that you will not be ashamed of anything. You commit your, yourself to the Lord, you're not going to be ashamed. Okay, you have nothing to be ashamed of. Number two, so that you will exalt Christ, whether it be by life or by death. We talked about that a little bit earlier. But... When you commit your body totally to Jesus Christ and you give yourself, you're giving yourself to Him, okay, you'll exalt Him. You, the, the, it, you, you'll do that, whether it be by life or by death. Okay, now, this, is, uh, this one covers a lot, but I think we could probably get this done. All right, so I'm going to go there. Okay, so, uh, okay, you must have one great concern, guys, okay, and girls. <laughs> okay. One great concern, okay? Now listen to this, okay? Because again, we're talking about our aim as a minister. Okay, so this is point five, okay? You must have one great concern. Consistency not to offend in anything. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? Amen. I, I'm tempted to say to somebody, a few people, what did I just say? But I'm not going to do that. 
because I'm afraid I'm going to embarrass somebody. Okay, I want you listening to me. I didn't drive all the way down here to talk to my son. All right? This is important. All right? You must have one great concern, consistency. Not to offend in anything. You know the Bible says to avoid even the appearance of evil? Even the appearance. I may not be doing anything wrong, but if it looks like I am, or I'm in a position where other people can misread something, it's better for me just to avoid it altogether. So I don't create a stumbling block, or I don't offend others in the things that I do. So we've got to be, very, we've got to be careful. As careful as we can. There are some people, look, no matter what you do, you can't scratch your end without offending them. All right? There are people like that. All right? We, we understand that. And, and, and so I, I know you understand what I'm saying. But I'm saying we don't need to just kind of go off and just offend each other and offend others. We need to pay attention. Okay? So we have to have, there's got to be a consistency in our lives not to be offensive in anything to others. We've got we to we gotta try to do that. It's hard. It's not always easy, but with the help of God, we can do it. All right, you must prove that you are a true minister of God, that you are, that you are faithful through all the experiences of life and through all trials and temptation. It seems like a big order, but folks, we, it's really not. The Lord, through the renewal of our mind, the transforming of our mind, as we talked about, renews us. And then we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So you find it easy to do. Because if you just put this down as a to-do list, and you're taking your notes and writing, okay, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to do this, 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 and this. By the time you get to point 20 or 30, you're going to throw your hands in the air. Make you want to holler. <laughs> like the Marvin Gaye song. Make you want to holler. <laughs> yeah. I can't do it. I can't do it. Maybe you can do it, but I can't do it. You, that's where you, we, we need to have faith in the mercies of Christ. And, in, 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 and this is where we need to trust Him and believe in His grace to help us, not to just cover our sins, but to help us to overcome. And we can. You can do it in Christ. All right? Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. Okay, see, that's why. We, we have a witness that we carry to others, okay? If you call, and you say, well, I'm not like Pastor Ryan. He, 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 this is for Pastor Ryan, not me. He can't give offense in anything so that the ministry is not blamed because he's in ministry. He preaches in front of the pulpit. I don't. Don't think like that. Because every Christian, folks, when you give your heart to the Lord, is a disciple of Christ. You don't have, whether you're behind the pulpit or not is irrelevant. Being behind the pulpit might mean that more people see you at one time. But, you're, but you are still a minister when you're out in the community doing the things that you do. And so you have to prove that you're a true minister of God. And you can't give offense in, in, in things that the ministry be not blamed. Because you don't want people in you here. It's about, you know, you're supposed to be a Christian, you're doing that. I remember an experience I had. Uh, you know, this was back when I was, I, I must have been about 20, maybe 19, 20 years old. I wasn't in ministry yet. But, and here, here, here was my life at the time. I, I was never an alcoholic, but I, I, I had an occasional beer, you know, and stuff like that. Well, I certainly had it when I had them when I was in the service. Not a lot of them, but, you know, like everybody else, we drink, drink our beers warm or more cold. Had a proverbial headache all day and all night because I was in a continual state, you know, just drinking down one beer. And somebody else would go, I buy, you fly, and they'd run and get, get another one. That was the way life was, okay, for me back at that time until I became, uh, you know, a Christian. But I remember kind of being in that midway point where I uh, had become a Christian but still hadn't dropped all my old habits, Right? So there were a couple of guys, uh, two people that I met. I was living in a <laughs> rent by the week apartment com at that time, like for seventy dollars a week. You know, no kitchen, just a microwave oven that I had to buy to eat my food and a bathroom and a bed. And there were some others that were up there, and there, I'll never forget there. There was a guy, 
and uh, and, uh, and 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 was, there were two guys and his wife, and they were Apache Indians, and he, they looked like they came off the reservation. Man, they still wore their hair long, everything like that. And I, one of the guys said, "Why don't you come on in? You know, come in and talk. We can talk." So we came in and talked. We, and, and, and the topic got on to, to religion and Christianity. And again, at that time, I wasn't in ministry, but I joined in the conversation and stuff. And the guy asked me, he said, do you want a beer? And I said, yeah, sure, you know. And so he, he, he gave me the beer and looked at me. And then, he, you know what he said to me? He says, okay, he says, well, now that you got the beer, go out, of, you know, you get out of my house to drink it. Because my mother never let anybody drink it. Now, that seemed unfair because the guy offered it to me. But he was offering it to me to see if I would take it. And the thing about it was, these guys that offered it to me weren't claiming to be Christians. But I was, I was kind of halfway there. So I was talking all about the Lord. But see, I was still living, you know, in the world. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was what I did caused them to disrespect not only me, but it, it destroyed the, the ministry. It hurt, it hurt the witness and the testimony. Do you see what I'm saying? So you have to be careful. This is why the Word of God says that we've got to be careful not to offend in anything that we do. Because people are watching. They really do want to see, are you living the life? Do you live it? Even people here, looking at each other. Some new guy comes in, like my brother here. Because I, I understand he just came. I don't know where he came from. But, but I know you're here. So he's looking at some of you guys that he doesn't know, maybe all of you yet. And he's hearing all this Jesus stuff. But then he's wondering whether it's evident in you guys after I leave. And, and the same for you. There were some of you looking over at Pastor Ryan, Sister Jenny. You know, um, Sister Yoselin. Who's, who's with us on, on here? On, on like, hey, sister, how you doing? God bless you. Okay. Yeah, he said amen. All right. So we need to be careful, folks, okay? We don't want the ministry to be blamed for our behavior or our irresponsibility. Okay, but in all things, we should be approving ourselves as the ministers of God or proving ourselves as the ministers of of God. Okay, now I'm going to say these things quickly, so write them down because we're going to wrap it up here in five minutes. Okay, how do we approve ourselves as ministers of God? Okay, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. If you're writing, you have to write fast. Okay, number one, in much patience. We've got to be patient. Okay, number two, in afflictions. When we're going through afflictions, whether that be physical or whether they're mental. You know, you know, there are some people that just complain about everything. They do. They're chronic complainers. And the power of life and death is in the tongue. So they never get better. There are some people, and you can lay hands on their head for healing, and it is like putting your, from a minister's perspective, okay? It is like putting your hands on a rock. You can pray the heck out of a, of a situation. Lord, heal them in Jesus' name. Anoint them with oil. Do all the things that you do. And then the minute you leave, 20 minutes later, they're complaining. And they're undoing everything right. that you just did. Amen. Because of the power of, 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 of life and death being in the tongue. You've got to watch what you're saying, folks. And so... We need to prove ourselves as ministers of God in much patience and in affliction. And those two things run together sometimes. Sometimes when we're in affliction, we have to be patient. In necessities. We prove ourselves in necessities because sometimes we, we're without. We may not have what the guy next door or somebody else has. Maybe we're in need of certain things, but there are some people when they get in need or, or things and they don't get what they want right when they want it, the clock is hit midnight, they haven't got it yet, they, they're, they're gone. Right. Sometimes the Lord will wait until one minute after midnight just to see what you do. Mm. 
or to shine a flashlight on your heart to show you what's inside. Are you going to get mad when you don't get it when you want it? When you need it, but it's not there? It's your fault, God, man. You could have done something about this. I hate you, God. You know? Boy, those are all things that I said in my time going back. You know? But I learned. And I'm still learning. And you got to understand, though, this is what God expects. Okay. We prove ourselves in distress. When we're in distress, in distresses, in stripes. And I'm not talking about jail stripes, although that might be uh, another way if you're, if you're unfortunate enough to end up there. But in stripes, and then the beatings and the things that we take, whether they be physical, whether they be uh, mental. You know, sometimes, you know, there are people that say things to you and you, a little bit of the world comes up and you want to knock them on their end, you know, or do something, you know, and, 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 and stuff. I remember telling you guys last week about the, when I was assistant pastor, the pastor of my, that uh, I came up under, he was a professional. He came out of the gangs and was a professional fighter. And we were passing out tracks in front of a, a food for less. And I know I, I, I told this, but I just got it. I didn't finish it. So, I'm gonna, so some, some kid, man, that was all tatted up, gangbanger, you know, he came up to him, mouth, started mouthing off to him for no reason, man. Wanted to challenge him to a fight, and I'm just thinking, oh my God, this guy is going to get killed because my my pastor was just, just up to two two years ago was still fighting off of the, off of the main event cards out in Vegas under uh, uh, <coughs> Bob Aaron and stuff. And so, I mean, you this is not somebody you wanted to get into a fist fight with. Now, if he had pulled a gun, it might have been a different thing, but he was challenging him to, you know, to, to a fight. And the pastor, he, did, he, he blew it off and just he walked away. <coughs> but then he told me, you know, Misha, he said, it, it is the hardest thing in the world when somebody does that to you, to walk away, when you know, you know, you, you'd really like to just bust them in the mouth. You know? So we have to understand that in, in, in the, that, that even in situations like that, we need to remember who we are in the Lord. Okay? And it goes on to say that in, 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 in imprisonments, we need to prove ourselves if we're imprisoned. Because some of us have been in prison, and some of us will be in prison, not because we did anything bad. Some of us will go to prison because we did the right thing. Because now, more and more, as you preach the Bible, our speech is being censored, and pretty soon we'll be enemies of the state. Righteous people going to jail for preaching the Word of God. And people calling you to hate crime, so we get arrested. Could happen. Probably will happen. It's already happening in other places. Okay? And in some alts, in arguments, fights, you know, where somebody wants to get on, wants to go with you. Okay? In labor. Okay, we need to approve, our, approve ourselves as ministers of God in the laboring we do. One of the things that has been such a powerful witness to my wife and to me has been this ministry here. I'm going to be real honest with you. I'm not just saying this because I'm coming here. But Pastor Ryan, man, and when he is such a godly man, he never gives you any crap when you talk to him on the phone. He, whatever you needed, hey, no problem, I got it. You know? And every time his guys come over, is they're, they, they, they're the most well-behaved, in case I, I never told you, the most well-behaved, the most polite, and and they 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 don't just do the job; they go they go the extra yard. I mean, I I had one brother come over, man, and in a van, in a in a in a truck, man. We went off in the side road, tried to dump some leaves, which was perfectly legal because it was a it was a, a, a actual gun gun shooting range, a shooting range out there. And um, he got it, but but he in order to dump those leaves, he went up there in his van and got his van caught in a sand pit. You know, that it only, oh, God only knows if we had to call a tow truck, it would have cost probably hundreds of dollars to get him out of that. I'll be darned, man, if, I, I still think these were angels. Because we were way off the road in the sticks. But some guy drives up as soon as it happens in a Jeep and he's got a tow bar, man, hooks him up and pulls him out. <laughs> where did that guy come from? We're, we're around the curb on a dirt thing in the desert and around a hill. And, and with, with weeds all around us. I don't even know how you could have seen any, seen them. 
I was amazed when I came because I ran to the house to go get something. I came back. That was when he got stuck and saw him pulling him out. I said, where did these guys come from? I well, don't know. <coughs> from the road, from the highway. I said, how could they see you from the highway? We don't know. <laughs> and, seen us when, he, when he went by, he seen the top of the van stuck in the... Yeah, you were there. But, but, but there are cars up there because of the people going to shooting range all the time. I go by there, I see cars all the time. I never stop to think maybe they're stuck and they need help. I just drive on by. But they turned in, man. And you were there. That's right. You were there. Yeah, this guy is phenomenal. Man, what a blessing. He, he handled that, the, the, that whole situation and everything so well. You know, I appreciate you. I, I really do. And we appreciate this ministry. You know, I want you to know that. It has been a witness to, to us. You know, it really has. Okay, so we're to also approve ourselves in, um, in, 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 uh, in watchings, labors and watchings. Um, and I don't know, I really have a lot to say about, about watchings. I guess that could apply to a lot of things. Okay, in fastings, I think watching means in our, in our, in our, in our waiting on the Lord and, and things of that nature. Because they used to have what we called watch meetings where you would watch. You know, and, and, and you would pray and watch and just wait on the Lord. People would go at night and, 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 and pray until the morning, you know, and stuff. And so, uh, and, and in fastings, uh, again, we don't, want, we, we don't want to give offense in anything that the ministry not be blamed, but in all things, approving ourselves as ministers of God in, in our fastings. Okay, by pureness, I'm going to start speeding it up now, unless I see them we need to talk about by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by love that is not faked, unfeigned love. Oh, I love you, brother. Well, I love you too. I love you, sister. I love you. And they're ready to keep. Really, they want to kill each other. No, we don't need. We don't, we need unfeigned love, real love that comes from God. So we need to seek godly love. Okay, by the word of truth. We approve ourselves, okay, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left by honor and, and, and dishonor. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. By the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. And then by honor and dishonor. Okay, we, you know, we, we approve ourselves by evil report and good report, no matter what it is, okay? No matter what somebody says about you, whether they, they give an evil report or they give a good report. We don't only take the good, but sometimes we have to take the bad. But when we take the bad, and, it, and we're undeserving of it, we still maintain a sense of spiritual dignity. Okay? We still don't, we don't stumble in, in, in others. We don't uh, offend, offend others. Okay? By evil report and good report. Okay? Being accused as deceivers and yet true. It's easy to be offended when people call you a liar. Or people say you're a fake. You're just one of those fakes. You're one of those hypocrites. One of those Jesus freaks. You're this, you're that. I never wanted to be one of those things. And now they're calling me this, and they're calling me that. Nah, you know. But, but, but we are to remember, it doesn't matter what they say. Our, we answer to a higher calling. We answer to God. And so our conduct in situations like that and the way we react to it has to be right so we don't jeopardize and endanger or hurt the reputation of the ministry. It's been hurt enough, right? Okay, so I hope you're following with me. I'm just about done. Okay, as unknown and yet well-known. Do you know that you're unknown to a lot of the world, but you're well-known to God and to one another? The rest of the world may hate your guts, they may just see you as another guy with tats and, and, and somebody coming from the street or maybe they may see you some another, another person coming out of the corporate office, whatever they, over there. They may have an image of you and stuff. It doesn't really matter, okay? Whether they see you as, as a deceiver or whether they, they want to label on you that you're, you're a nobody, you're unknown. You're, you know, if they label you as a deceiver, you got to remember God sees you as true. If, they, if you're an unknown to everyone else, you're still known by God. I will never leave you or forsake you, he says. Right? Okay. As chasten, I'm sorry, as dying, and behold, we live. Okay? 
Um, even if, if we are dying, I'm talking about physically, physical death, or we could say spiritual death too, we're still alive in Christ. And, and like, like tonight, my mother will not see the morning according to doctors. But, but, but she's saved. She's 86 years old, last stage of kidney failure. They moved, moved her to a hospice from the hospital because they can't do anything for her. I got a phone call on the way over here telling me that she'll probably not make it through the night according to, to that. Do I worry about it? No, I don't. Because I know, number one, she knows the Lord. I know I'll see her again. So she's just traveling to another address, just changing addresses and moving to another realm. You know? And even though she's dying, she lives. See, I know that. Now, I got brothers and sisters that don't have a close walk with God. And they're mourning, and, and of course, you know, you, you, you're always sad when somebody leaves. We have emotions and feelings. But what we know where we stand and where, the, where others stand in Christ and what their relationship is, God can take away a lot of, a lot of that. Because it's not the end. As, as the world sees it, okay? So whether we're in, in, in dying, behold, in the eyes of God, we still live. And as chastened, we may be chastened. We may be chastened physically or verbally in other ways, but we're not killed. We are not destroyed, okay? So as sorrowful and yet always rejoicing. Now, in my situation, I'm sorry. I feel sorry. I'm sorry. I feel that, for, for, you know, I'm sorry that my mom is leaving. But, you know, I'm always, but I'm rejoicing, you know. I don't know how to put this, okay? Um, okay, let me put it to you this way. You can be sad, but still rejoice. Have you ever experienced that? You can. Because I, I can be unhappy with some of the things that are happening to me at a particular moment, but still rejoicing in the Lord. Because I know that I have eternal life. I know that ultimately he, I'm going to be all right. He's going to take care of me. All right? So this is, this is important for ministers. We have to have these, these attitudes. Okay? And then the last, the last two. Number one is poor yet making many... This is a good one. I actually like this. As poor yet making many rich. Do you realize that a lot of us, we're, we, maybe we're not wealthy, but every time... We share the word of God with somebody, we and, and and they receive it. Especially, we make them rich because we have taken them, we have stolen them from the gates of hell and put them in front of the pearly gates that lead into the kingdom of God. We have moved them from one place to another. We have taken them from a place of of of, of not only physical but spiritual poverty to a place of, of spiritual enrichment. So you're making people rich. Even though you yourselves, okay, may physically, physically be poor. You might not have a lot. Barely making it. Food stamps, you know, whatever. But you, you are making people rich. You've got to see yourself that way. And then finally, as having, <laughs> this kind of goes with, 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 what I, with the last one. As having nothing and yet possessing all things. You have nothing, but you possess everything. We have everything in Christ, Right? Doesn't the Lord say in His Word, I will give you all things that pertain to life and godliness? All, A-double-L, all things that pertain to life and godliness. Okay, so we're going to wrap this up with two... I've got to do this because we've got, we got to have some scriptures, okay, to, to, to highlight this. And then we're going to... We're going to... I think... Let me see. Does anybody got a pen? Can I borrow your pen? Okay, I'm just going to put this here. Start here. We're going to wrap it up now. Start here. I just don't feel led to go any further. Because there's, there's a, three, two scriptures I can add to all the things that we talked to. Then another scripture and a thought. Um, eh, you know what? Let's start here. Okay, let's do the scriptures. All right, real quickly. Okay, can I get one of the brothers uh, or, or sisters? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3 through 10. So that's a lot of reading. Okay, I might have my brother right here. I'll read that. Second Corinthians chapter six, two through six. No, Second uh, Corinthians chapter six, verses three through ten. Three through ten. All right. We give no offense in anything, that our ministry may not be blamed. But in all things, we we can commend ourselves as ministers of God in much patience, 
in tribulations, in needs, Listen. in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in sleeplessness, <clears throat> in fasting, by purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Right, so that's what we just went through, right? So that there, 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 there are the scriptures for the points. So if you missed the points, go back and read 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 3 through 10, and mark it up in your Bible. 2 Corinthians. Corinthians chapter 6, verses 3 through 10. Okay. Now, somebody turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We just got two verses there, 8 through 10. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10. Somebody that hasn't read. Richard, go ahead. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Wow. So, I mean, those, those are just like, man... They're like battle orders almost, and how, or, or, or just, uh, it, they're the great, great guideposts on how to walk with God and how to be a minister. That, what, what our brother just read in te- 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10, certainly, um, if you're taking notes and you put them in your Bible, I would write down, I would, I would underline that, and then I would put C, 2 Corinthians 6, I mean 2 Corinthians, yeah, 2, 6, 3 through 10. And that would take, 2 Corinthians 6, 3 through 10, and then put C, 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, 8, uh, uh, yeah, 4, 8 through 10. Because they, they, they go together. They, they, they go together. They're very, it's very good. Okay, so, okay. And then finally, okay, we're going, okay, now that we're done. Because we're going to start over here uh, on this next, uh, next, next scripture, next, next uh, time I'm here. All right, so uh, let's let's pray, and um, uh, I, I want everybody to bow your head. Okay, every eye closed. Nobody looking around. I'm going to say a prayer this evening for and, and close it out myself. Okay, Lord, I thank you so much, Lord, for the uh, Lord ability just to bring this lesson this evening. One that I believe is so important for those of us that are here at uh, the Set Free School of Ministry in Desert Center, and also for those that are here watching on uh, online, that, Lord, that we can take these words and keep them. Lord, they don't go in one ear and out the other, but they stay within our spirits and they're sealed to our spirits. You said my words are spirit in their life. So, Father, we pray that they reproduce within us, in Jesus' name, and I thank you for it. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys.